guys and welcome to Faith Works Designs. I'm Faith and today we are doing a really exciting pattern from Mika Posh and it is called the Kayla. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to put it together and it is a really really cute purse. I think you're going to like this one. So we have our little flap in the front with our little overlay right here and I am going to tell you guys this is an intermediate pattern. It's an intermediate pattern just because of some of the technical stuff. Now I will say this pattern is put together in a way that I've never done before and that's one of the things that I like about trying new patterns is that I'm learning new things as I try new patterns and this one was definitely a learning curve which is great because we want to learn. We want to get better at what we're doing. So we've got our little flap our little handle. We've got this beautiful design in the front and it just makes it look so fancy. So then you've got your D-rings on the side, your back panel that yes is upside down. It's okay. I wanted the front to be straight. We've got some purse feet on the bottom and then on the inside we've got a cute little flap. We've got our zipper pocket and then a little slip pocket right here. It's nice and simple on the inside because you're going to be spending a lot of time on the outside. So here's a couple of things that I want you guys to know before we get started. One, the overlay. Take your time doing the overlay because even I struggled with it. I would highly recommend the glue. Um, I All I had was double sided tape. I didn't have the glue and I think if I had the glue I probably would have had a better success rate with the overlay because I really struggled. Um, the second thing is the Decoville Heavy. So I want you to look at the bags from the side. These flaps right here stick up a lot and I didn't use any of the heavy interfacing on this bag. So it's kind of slouchier. Um, so definitely didn't use any Decoville Heavy in this one and these flaps are kind of flapping up. In the video today I show you how to take the one-sided interfacing instead of Decoville Heavy because I never <laughs> I never use Decoville Heavy but I think I'm going to have to buy some so I can make this pattern again. Um, but the flaps don't do that on here. They say like they're supposed to. So I definitely would highly recommend making sure that you have some kind of heavier interfacing for the body of this so that uh, the purse will do like it's supposed to. So let's get started. All right so let's talk about hardware and all of our pieces that we're going to need to get started. The very first thing you're going to need is you're going to need four purse feet. I love purse feet. Let me show you why. Do you guys hear that? I don't know why but that brings me so much joy when I put a purse down and hear that noise. Okay I know I'm weird just live with it. Okay you're also going to need a magnetic snap or you can do a turn lock. Now I'm not going to be doing a turn lock in the video today, however um, there are plenty of videos out there that you guys can learn how to put a turn lock in there. The directions um, will show you how to do that, uh, but you can use a turn lock. Today I figured I would show you how to do a magnetic snap because they're not in the directions and then I'll just kind of show you how to do it. Um, then you're also going to need two D-rings. And then you're also going to need your hardware for your actual purse straps. Alright, so we've got all of my pieces cut out. You're going to have your overlay. Um, it is not interfaced. You do need to go ahead and make your markings how far that you need to cut in. We will talk about this piece in just a minute because that... We'll talk about it in a minute. Alright, so you've got your side pieces. Those are also interfaced. Oh, we are just working on the outside pieces right this second. Um, and then we'll talk about the lining in a little bit. All right, so I had this print that I wanted to use. And it was in one of my 12-inch roll, uh, inch rolls that I had. So on your pattern, and your pattern may change just slightly. We've been doing some editing and things on the pattern. So it, wording and stuff might change, but it, it'll work, okay? Um, on your pattern you can see where the bottom of your purse is right here. That's where you're going to be putting your purse feet. So if you wanted to use a different um, vinyl for the top, the back, and the front, you could and then add a different color for the bottom. I recommend highly just doing one piece for your first one so that you learn how to make the bag first. That's what I did with my first one. I just made it all one vinyl and it made life a whole lot easier. However, 
I didn't have enough of this vinyl to be able to do it in the direction that I wanted to do it, so I added a bottom. Um, if you add a bottom, you're going to need to make sure that you leave yourself seam allowance so that when it folds out, it'll be the right, um, it'll be right in between here. So right here did perfectly, and I knew that this one was going to be a little short, so some of the green is going to show up on the back of my purse. I really don't care about that. Um, but when you close it up, it'll look like that. So just kind of pay attention to placement. Um, when you're cutting things out, especially if you're using a directional print, you're really going to have to pay attention to which is going where. Because if I had continued with this and did it along my 12 inch, everything would have been sideways. <laughs> so pay attention to that. All right, now we're going to work on our exterior frame panel. Now let me tell you, <laughs> she suggests using glue, and I would highly recommend that you follow that. Um, I do not have the glue in stock, so I had to use double-sided tape, and it works fine. However, it was really hard with double-sided tape to make sure that these corners, you probably cannot see them, but there's um, little points that are kind of poking out here and there. If I had had the glue, I probably could have moved it around a little bit more and been able to get um, crisper corners. That was the one issue I had with this bag, and I talked to her about it. Um, I hate those raw edges, but I think we're going to try harder today to make sure that those raw edges look really, really good. So we're going to work on that together. All right, first things first, you're going to cut out your exterior frame panel E. And then what I did is I went ahead and took my paper scissors and cut out all the little notches. And then I laid it out on my piece and I kind of peeled it back, made my marks on all of these marks. And then what I did was I went ahead and I took my scissors and I opened up all those marks. If you have a smaller ruler, you're going to want to keep this near you. I used a smaller ruler throughout this entire project when I made it on my own, so I would highly recommend getting a small ruler that you can kind of hang out with all day. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is I'm going to take my ruler and we're going to make a one inch mark from the edge. And we're going to do that all the way around on all of these edges. This is why I said a small ruler will be really, really nice for this project because I just, I had it on my desk all day when I was working on the other one because I wanted to make sure I didn't want to drag out that big long ruler. So I'm just going all the way around on all of the edges so that there is a line going all down the center of your project. Even on the bottom. Alright, so I have got so I've got my half inch double sided tape and I have designated these scissors as my double sided tape scissors. You don't need scissors for double sided tape, but it'll just make everything look a lot nicer if you've got straight edges. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start at this end and I'm going to give myself just a little piece right here. And then I'm just going to put double sided tape down the center where I made a mark. You might have to add a little bit more. Um, again, this is probably why glue is a little better because you can kind of move it around and put it where you need to. Um, but I found that the, the double sided tape is okay. Yes, it would be better if I had glue. So I'm just going to go all the way around and put double sided tape. All right, and now that I'm done with that, I realized that I missed two spots when I was making my marking, so I can actually show you how I did this. So we're just going to line everything up, pull this back, make your mark, okay, and then I'm going to take my fabric scissors, and I'm going to cut down that mark just like that. 
I am also going to have, I'm going to have some clips ready because I am using the uh, double sided tape. It's not as good as having glue. So I'm going to use some clips just to kind of hold all of this in place until I can do the next step and sew everything down. So first things first is we're going to take the top and meet it to that center line that we just made. And I find that this works a lot better for me if I work on one side or the other at a time instead of trying to do the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this paper off and I'm going to fold this over until it hits the line. You see how both of these two are hitting that line. Now, here's where I had all of those issues with my corners. Need to make sure that this fabric right here is edge to edge, okay? And then what I found worked best, making sure that they're edge to edge, pushing down a little bit, and then taking my scissors, like so. All right. And then cutting across. And you should get this nice corner. I may have to add a little bit more double sided tape. I'll do it again. I'm going to show you guys throughout this whole process what I'm doing. Because um, it, it's not hard. It's just making sure that you don't cut too far up so that the tip of that is showing like a sore thumb. We don't want that. We don't want it showing like that. We want to have it look really nice. So you can pull it, you can move it around, and I just added a little extra double-sided tape so that it would lay down like that. All right, let's do it again. Let's see, where do we want to go next? All right, so we're going to take this side Flip it over. It should be caught by a little bit. See this little angle you have right here? These are the angles that I enjoyed. <laughs> These other ones were not the angles that I enjoyed, but that's okay. All right, so let that sit there. I'm going to come down here to the bottom real quick. I'm going to fold this up. I'm just meeting that center right there. Now what I'm going to do is take this tape off, and I'm going to take this edge and meet the center. All right, I'm going to do the same thing that I did up here. I'm going to make this come down, this come down, and making sure that this edge right here is meeting up. Now, I think what I'm going to do for the rest of this is I'm going to bring you guys down closer to me so you can actually see what I'm doing. But let me do this one real quick. So we're going to make sure that this edge is straight pushing down and then you're just your scissors are going to be straight they're not going to be this way they're not going to be that way they're going to be straight all right much better corner that's a good one that's a good corner let me move you guys so you can see what i'm doing all right hopefully this will be better we'll see all right so you're going to push this side down we just did this side and i don't know if you can see it or not but that's our little corner. You don't want to trim off too far so that if this wasn't here, all of that would be raw. And we don't want that. So we're going to push this all the way down to this corner. And then do the best that you can to match these corners up. That one's a little harder because the fabric is going a different way. But you want to just kind of match them up. And then I'm going to push... I'm going to push down, like so, keeping my scissors nice and straight across. They're not dipping or moving. They're going straight across. All right, that'll do. And then I'm just going to put a clip right there so that they don't move for right now. All right, now let's do this side. So this side right here is going to go right to the middle, right to the center. All right, and then you're going to match those up again as best as you can because this corner is a little weird. You see what I'm saying when I'm saying matched up? There's not like 
one side is higher than the other. I'm trying to get them to be the same, the same all the way around. Well, along the sides. All right, so I'm gonna hang on to it, put my scissors nice and straight. All right, perfect. And then I'm just gonna take this clip and that'll hold both of those together for me. All right, next time. So push this. You are going to have a little bit of extra double-sided tape peeking out. That's fine. That'll help us later on when we decide to put this onto the main body of our bag. All right, so then we're going to take this side that I did not cut up high enough. If you don't want to cut past those line marks, ask me how I know. You want to cut just along those lines. So I've made this one meet up to the center, this one meet up to the center, and then I'm gonna make sure that these two fabrics right there, that one is not going higher than the other one, but that they're kind of along the same line. And then my scissors are straight. And then there you go. There's another corner. We're almost half done. <laughs> this is literally the hardest part, is trying to figure this all out right here. Um, it's the hardest part. And then once you get past that, it's not that hard. It's just stuff like this bothers me. I want to make sure that it's just right. All right. So if you wanted to, you could put a clip here, and that way that won't move. It just depends on what kind of double-sided tape you're working with. All right, so we're gonna take another piece and you're just kind of working your way around. Now we can take, as a matter of fact, I'm just gonna take a clip and put that down. All right, so we're gonna take this side. All right, so you see how those two are even right here? And then I'm just going to push down and getting my scissors as level as I can, I'm gonna cut across there. See how this one's overlapping a little bit? I might need to trim that down. And I hate to do it because I'm gonna trim too far. I know it. All right, so they just they should meet up in the center. All right, so it's gonna look a little silly for a minute. <laughs> it's okay. We're gonna get there. We're going to get there. All right, now this corner, make it meet in the center. And then again, you're just gonna do this all the way around. This corner is weird, so they're not gonna um, meet up together, but I'm gonna do the best that I can to make sure that they're centered, that they're straight. And then I'm gonna take my fingers, hold it there, push it down. Like I said, this is the hardest part, trying to get these things, these corners, because if you don't do it just right, you're gonna see that tip of fabric poking out. So I think when I get done, I'm gonna go, kinda go around and make sure that I'm not seeing any of that. So I'll just take my time and see that looks better already. And when you sew it down, listen, I had to message Mika and I was just like, help. <laughs> I had to message her and I, I was like, help. So once you sew the front flap and the lining flap together, it does really help um, not being able to see those. So I'm gonna try a little bit harder in this one to make sure that they don't, they don't show. You just have to really take your time with this process right here. All right, actually bottom first, bottom first. And make this meet in the middle. Alright, and then just finish that up. And once you have it all clipped up, we can work on the front main panel. So I went back through and I kind of adjusted a little bit, made sure the points were just a little bit better looking on the other side. 
because that part bothers me. So I work on it a little bit more off camera where I can actually pay attention to what I'm doing. So the next thing you've got is your front, like the whole body. We need to work on that next. The next thing that I did was I grabbed some double sided tape and I put it along the edge of your, um, on the, along the edge of the outside. You're going to need to make sure that this bottom piece is separate from these two sides so that you can do one side at a time. In the instructions she tells you to measure up an inch and then kind of mark and make sure that this edge when we turn it up goes to that one inch. But when I was cutting out my interfacing, I made sure that it was an inch all the way around so that I could just do what I needed to do. Now that I'm looking at the bottom, I don't think I was paying attention to the bottom. So let's, <laughs> let's go ahead and do that. Obviously, I was super paying attention. All right, there we go. There's my mark. So I'm going to start on this side, and what you're going to do is you're going to take the outer edge and meet that one inch mark. All the way down. You are also going to be doing, or going to be having, that little pinched corner on the corner, so don't push this down. Leave it up, and we're just going to go along the sides. Now, it's going to be a minute before I get to actually sewing this, and because I have those seams there, I'm just going to add a few clips just to kind of hold it in place for right this second. We'll do the other side. All right, now, on the bottom, we're going to take the tape off. If our tape will come off. All right, so we're going to meet that inch right there. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did on our overlay, is we're going to make sure that these two corners right here are nice and flush as much as you can. We're going to cut those diagonals just like we did the other one, making sure that our scissors are as straight across as we can get them. And you should have your nice little corner like that. And you do that on the other side too. So I'm going to put a little foot there and a little foot there to hold them in place. Now, our overlay. Let's talk about our overlay. So we're going to need to line all of this up, but I want to make sure our overlay is about a quarter of an inch over this little piece right here. About a quarter of an inch and the sides are going to want to line up. So you're going to have to move this around a little bit to make sure that it's working. And the double-sided tape that's kind of like peeking out in the project is going to be what, what holds it. You can put a little bit more double-sided tape on there if you want. It's up to you. I am going to use my clips as well to kind of hold it in place. I would add some more double-sided tape here if you got it, but it seems like it's doing pretty good. Alright, so that's what it should look like on the back. Now on the front, what we're going to do is we're going to start right here 
And what I did was I put my needle down about an eighth, an eighth of an inch away from the edge because you're going to be top stitching this later on. So I started about an eighth of an inch from the edge and you're going to be sewing an eighth of an inch from the edge from here, here, doo -doo, doo -doo. and then back here. We're not touching any of this. This is for later on. So let's go to the sewing machine and sew this down. All right, so I have got my stitch length at a four and I'm going to be sewing an eighth of an inch away from the edge of our overlay. I am starting an eighth of an inch in. That's, uh, I don't believe that's in the instructions, but um, that's what I'm gonna do. That way I'm not double sewing over top of myself, so. Let's turn it. Make sure that your needle is down when you go to pivot and when you go to turn this so that it doesn't kind of like slide around. So I'm just going to put my needle down and then turn it. So we have got our overlay all sewn on. Um, you're also going to need to trim this down just a little bit. Uh, we'll do that in a minute. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the piece K, the front design panel. It needs to be mirrored. So when you're cutting it out, and you say you've got your vinyl here, you need to take it, cut it out, turn it over. And cut it out that way this piece is mirrored so that when we're putting these on they go like that ask me how I know <laughs> that it needs to be mirrored oh that was my first big mistake and I had to remake them it was really annoying got to pay attention to the directions all right next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a pen we're gonna turn them on the wrong side and then grab a pen we're going to mark one inch. So basically they're two inches wide. You're going to put a one inch mark there. I'm also going to take my ruler and do it sideways and make a little mark right there. I did them both the same way. And then I went to put them on the purse and I'm like, something's not right. <laughs> They, it wouldn't fit no matter how I turned it it wouldn't it wouldn't do like it was supposed to all right once you've got that all marked up next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab some some more double-sided tape you can do a quarter of an inch uh, I'm just gonna do half an inch and that way I'm going I'm starting it just a little past that line and I'm going to finish it a little past that one inch mark. 
again, if you have glue, go ahead and use the glue here. It'll probably turn out a lot better if you use the glue. All right. Now, just like we did on our overlay, we're going to do to these. So we're going to take it and we're going to come to that center mark. And we're going to stop at that one inch mark that we made down here. Just push those down, turn it around, and stop right there. We're going to have two corners. So this end right here needs to come down to that mark on that angle that you made with your mark. And we're going to do the same exact thing that we did with our overlay. We're going to need to line it up and then trim it off at that edge. So I'm not good at doing this standing up, so I'm going to sit down. <laughs> I'm going to sit down and do this at the table. I need a good pair of scissors. You really want a nice, sharp pair of scissors for this project to cut all these angles with. Again, making sure that your scissors are flush. Making sure that that angle right here is nice and flush. Pushing down. All right. It doesn't look beautiful, but you won't see it when I turn it over. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. We're going to do this again at an angle. And you're going to do that to both ends and both sides. All right, now that we've got these all ready to go, next thing we're gonna do is we're going to put double-sided tape down the centers of them so that uh, we can place them on our bag. So I'm just going to take it and I'm going to make sure that I get that end piece caught in the double sided tape. Because you'll have one little piece sticking out there. Make sure you catch it with the double sided tape. Then you're going to need to get your main panel um, pattern piece. Set these aside. Get your main pattern piece. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn this over. And we're going to make all of our marks. So I'm glad I didn't do my trim yet. All right. We're going to make sure that this is lined up. We need to mark our handle connector, our purse feet, and our mail bag, um, the mail part of your either your turn lock or your uh, magnetic snap. So what I did was I took my seam ripper and I opened this line up. And then I'm just going to take my pen and I'm going to mark like that. Next thing that I did was I went ahead and I um, took one of my little hole punches and I punched out the holes for the feet. And then I'm just going to mark it right like that. Do not punch through your fabric. I just took my hole punch and cut through the mark so that I can make a mark with my pen. Next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to mark here. Right there. All right, now you're going to take this and flip it over. Make your bag handle mark your feet marked, and then you should have your magnetic snap mark. We just got to do a little bit of prep. We just got to do a little bit of prep before we keep moving on because we do need to trim this down and I'll do that in a minute. All right, next thing that we're going to do is we are going to add these to our bag. In your instructions, you will have a mark where you need to put you need to take your front of your flap and flap it up. 
I found it's just as easy to flip it up until it matches on your sides. Like it doesn't match when I have it down here. Just kind of match match up your sides. It really literally does not matter. Okay, do not stress about this. However, you're going to need to make sure that it's flapped up enough so that you can see this part. This is what we're just trying to um, have it laid out so that we can place these in the correct spot. So I'm going to grab my little ruler and what we're going to do is we're going to want this to be 3.75. The corner of our top should match the angle of the top of our bag. So I'm going to just take this clip off and I'm going to take a little bit of my paper off. I'm going to double check that. All right. Make sure that we're going at the right angle here. Next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to measure one and a quarter down here. So your bag, your angle should angle like that. And let's take that tape off. And that's one side. You could go ahead and sew that down, but I'm going to go ahead and do both of them while I'm here. Take these clips off so they're out of the way. All right, you see how they they both have an angle? They both shouldn't be going like that. They should both be going like that. All right. So three, let's see, one, two, three, and three quarters is where the edge of this one should be. So I'm going to take a little bit of paper off. Now you're going to do one and a quarter down here. That's where that little edge should stop. Now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge. I'm going to take my stiletto and what I'm going to do is at these bottom corners I see a little bit of my green poking out so I'm going to take my stiletto as I'm sewing and kind of push things to where I want so that I don't see those raw edges. Ooh, look at that. That looks so good right there. All right. We're taking it to the sewing machine an eighth of an inch all the way around. Make sure that you take time. Make sure things are matching up where they're supposed to be. And let's go do that. I have still got my stitch length to a four. And you're just sewing an eighth of an inch around the edges. All right, now we're gonna make a handle. I, I think it looks a lot nicer when you have kind of your contrasting handles. Um, for this one, I think I'm gonna have the green showing on the outside, I'm not sure. I might change my mind. We'll see. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a um, one inch mark all the way down. These are two inches, so it's gonna give you a line right down the center. We're gonna do that for both of these. Then I'm going to grab my double sided tape and I'm going to put a strip right down the center all the way. Now we're going to take the double sided tape off or the paper off and make it meet, make your handle meet all the way down the center just like so. Now I'm going to take another piece of double sided tape and I have got the raw edges that I folded in on themselves facing me and I'm going to put another thing of double sided tape right along there. I'm going to remove my paper and then I'm going to take my contrasting fabric strap and I'm going to put it right on top of my other one so that we're making a strap sandwich. Now if you see a little bit of your handle is sticking out you need to move it around. 
make sure that they're right on top of each other so that you don't have too much strap hanging out from the other. Look on both sides and just make sure that you're happy with that. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to take this to the sewing machine and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew down, come across and around all the way back down. Um, you are not going to see these ends so it does not matter. You don't need to go down one end, stop and go down the other end. You're not even going to see it. It's going to be your invisible handle. Alright, so I'm going to do that off camera real quick and then we'll get to installing this. Now that we've got our handle made, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab our main panel and where we made those inch marks, I believe it's an inch, we're going to open them up with our seam ripper. Alright, next thing that you're going to do is we're going to figure out which side we want showing. Do we want the green side showing or do we want more Baby Yoda? I think it needs the contrast of the green. So I'm going to stick this in my hole that I just made. You're going to have an inch and a quarter on the wrong side of your fabric. So you're going to need to get your little ruler out. I'll eyeball it for just a second. So we want, that's about an inch. You're going to want about an inch and a quarter coming through the back side. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take this to the sewing machine and you're going to top stitch right here making sure to um, when you go forward one stitch, back one stitch, forward till you want to stop, back one stitch, and then forward stitch again. So I'm going to go do that. So I still have my stitch length at a four. So I'm going to go forward one stitch, back one stitch, forward to where I want to stop back stitch and forward and stop. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the other side and we're going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to stick in my handle. So I'm going to put my handle in. We're going to measure an inch and a quarter on the wrong side. I know that is way more than an inch and a quarter. <laughs> right at an inch and a quarter. Alright, so hang on to that. You could use some double sided tape if you wanted to just to make sure that it doesn't move. It's up to you. Alright, so we're going to start. Go back one. Go back one. Alright, your handle is now attached. All right, so we've got our handle attached and I noticed when I went to do my lining that these kept wanting to like flip up. So what I'm going to do is I am going to add a rivet right in the center. I'm not going to be super picky about where it goes, um, but I just want to make sure that it's one in the center of where my handle is underneath and in the center of where it say this is the end of my I can feel it with my finger the end of my strap and this is the end of my fabric I want to put it right smack dab in the middle of my strap and in the middle of where the strap is underneath it here that will just give it a little bit more stability since you're going to be picking this up by the handle a lot um, I just I felt like it really it really needed it so I'm going to attach my stem through the bottom. Then I'm going to put my cap on and I'm going to go to the other side real quick. All right, now I'm going to smash those rivets down and I think that's just a little extra security so we don't have to worry about that handle coming off or pulling the stitches being pulled on too much so that they come loose. 
And I think it's just a little extra stability that it needed. All right. All right, now what we're gonna need to do that we've got our handle attached and I actually feel like those rivets make the handle stand up better. I don't know, let me look, hold on. I mean, it stands up okay on its own, but I also have it pulled taut. So yeah, I think I like the rivets better. I think, I think that looks nicer. All right, now, the last thing that we need to do on this panel is add our purse feet. I'm gonna take my seam ripper, you can use a hole punch, whatever you wanna use. I'm gonna make a little hole. I'm going to take the feet of my feet inside and you're going to want your feet going this way not this way because we're going to be sewing on that seam Ooh, I gotta get put your washer on there and then push those down so I'm just going to make those a snit I'm going to do that for all four of my first feet All right, once you get your purse feet on, you really do need to have some kind of tape or something over top of these because if you're using like a cotton lining, eventually over time that's going to wear out and wear down your cotton lining. The next thing that we're going to do, we're going to grab our side panels, our D-ring, um, invisible connectors, and our D-rings. All right, so we have got our connectors our side panels and our D-rings. Next thing that we're going to do is we are going to finish this side and then we're going to go back to our main panel because I forgot to put the magnetic snap on. <laughs> we're going to get to it, I promise. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little connectors that you cut out and then I'm going to make a center mark because we are going to be folding these into the center to make our little connectors. Now with mine, I'm using one inch hardware. Um, so I made my strips two inches wide. The pattern's a little different. If you wanna follow the pattern, um, make sure that yours are a little thinner and then make sure that you find, find the center for yours. Um, but I never, ever, ever use three quarters of an inch hardware, <laughs> like ever. So um, I just figured, you know what, I'll make it a little bit bigger, we'll make it work. All right, so we're gonna take one side to the center and the other side to the center. Just like that. We're gonna do that on both of them and then she wants you to sew an eighth of an inch down each side. And you're not gonna see any of this, you're not gonna have to worry about this popping open or anything because of the way that you do the invisible D-ring. So doing it an eighth of an inch is good. Let's go do that. All right, so now we're gonna grab our piece F, our connector for our side of our bag. Um, we've got our little connector sewn. Let's see. Next thing we're gonna do is I actually took my seam ripper and opened this up. And then I flipped over my pattern pieces, laid it down on top of each other, and then just use my pen and mark where my openings are going to be. And then I'm going to take my seam ripper and I'm going to open mine up just a little bit wider because I did use the bigger hardware. But make sure that you follow the pattern hole if you're doing the three quarters of an inch hardware. And the next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to mark out one inch all the way around. And that's going to go all the way down. Grab your handy dandy double sided tape. I'm just going to put it right along there.
Once that's done, we're going to take our paper off and then fold it in to that one inch line that you just made. Um, you are going to again have those corners that are going to fold in on each other and then you're going to have to trim those corners off. You're going to be really good at this when you get done. <laughs> You'll be really good at those corners by the time you get finished. Make those match up. All right, now we're going to take our D-ring connector and put it through that hole. And you're going to need three quarters of an inch poking out through that side. All right, so I have a little bit more than three quarters. Perfect. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to take this to the sewing machine and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch right above, you see where our slit is right here? I'm going to sew right above that, sewing that D-ring connector in place so it doesn't go anywhere. Alright, so we're going to sew right next to, not on top of, but right next to that sliced um, piece of fabric. I've still got my stitch length at a four. All right, and then you're going to need to pull your threads through, burn the ends, and get them all out of the way. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our D-ring connector and slide it on like this. And then take our other end and put it through that hole again. Now, from past experience, I will say make sure that the bottom of your D ring is nice and taut. So you want to pull it through as much as you can before you go to put your rivet on. Come on. So you're just going to pull that through. And just like that. Now we're not going to sew. We're just going to put a rivet right there. And go ahead and do your other one to this step and then I'll show you how to put the rivet on. Alright, if you haven't marked it already, you could you could have went ahead and marked it if you wanted to. I was just afraid it was going to get um, rubbed off. So I've matched up my cut line with my rivet and I'm going to make my mark there. And I'm actually going to do it where I can see it make sure that I get it in the center. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to grab my hole punch and then I will set my rivet. You're going to want to do this to both of your side panels. Alright, I am going to snatch that ribbon in place and then I'm going to go back and do my other side and then when I come back we will install our magnetic snap. Alright, so we're going to deal with the AC for just a minute because it was getting hot up here. Alright, we need to really quickly put our male end of our magnetic snap in our little 
spot there that we made earlier on the pattern piece. And I'm going to take my seam ripper and open that spot up. I'm going to place the nail in. Man, this is a really busy print. <laughs> I'm going to place my nail in through the front. Put my washer on. You could put some kind of stabilizer behind this if you would like. You can also put some tape on that if you would like. All right. Next thing that we need to do is come back to our side panels and finish those up. I'm going to be taking these corners right here and I'm going to be folding them together just like that. And we're going to sew at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We're going to sew them together on both sides of our side panel.